As the Chills prepared for the last concert of the tour in Dunedin, more band personnel changes were imminent. Just when it seemed that the Chills were on the edge of the international success that they pursued for over 10 years, the keyboards player Andrew Todd announced that he was going to leave. It's quite an emotional thing. You know? uh, I've probably put more time and energy specifically into the Chills than I've, I've really put into any, any other single sort of thing. You know? So it's been quite a hard decision to make. But um, I don't think I'm really the right person for the job anymore. You know? Apart from anything else, I mean, my role in the band, which, which is very much just to support with the keyboards, you know, the, the music, um, is something I think anyone, you know, with, with some skill or, <laughs> you know, and with Martin's guidance could do, you know. But really, I, you know, what I want to do is not, um, is not the same as what Martin wants to do, which, uh, which is, I think, ultimately, you know, made, made my mind up. There's a lot of Andy's skill, you know, I mean, He's almost a silent partner, really, in the music. You know, he's very important in sort of taking ideas that Martin's got, because Martin's got a lot of ideas. He hasn't actually got any ability to put them on the keyboard or you know write them out or something. And there was a lot of that involved in the last four years. A lot of a lot of Andy working, you know, scoring parts like Submarine Bells was basically scored by Andy. You know, and all the arrangements was, were were. Martin and Andy would work together and they'd sort of like, Andy would play an arrangement and Marty would say, one more note there or something. And um, I'm very anxious to see what happens after that because I think um, after, you know, after this, after Andy leaves, because that's going to be uh, a facet of the, or an integral part of Submarine Bells that won't be there, you know, and the communication level that, Andy and Martin work on from a musical sense is actually quite high and um, that's going to take Martin quite a long time to re-establish with say maybe another uh, keyboard player. Three months after the tour finished Justin Harwood announced his departure as well. Then the manager Craig Taylor was replaced. A new American management team formerly with Prince was taking over. Of course the record company we were uh, pretty um unnerved by especially Andrew's departure initially but I think um, by the time Justin left they were already getting to the swing of things with the uh, you know the oft quoted chills revolving door policy in fact the uh, Slash's manager just laughed Slash Records um, when I told him about just leaving he said what do you do to these people? The history books have been written I'm sure the chills will sort of like succeed and um, well I hope they do you know I I'd like to see sort of like the work, high work that I put in pay off for somebody, you know. And uh, I'd like to see Marty get his goals. I don't know that um, he's going to be happy in the in the long run if he does succeed in in, in getting there, you know. Because um, I don't think success alone is is really what it takes. But um, you know, I mean, uh, everybody changes, and and maybe he'll change along the way and sort of. You know, look at things again and, and decide that there are other things important in life apart from success. now for I think I guess the other members of the group just in terms of ensuring that there is something for it and them I think to some extent to some extent I have um, deluded myself a bit about that about what there is in the chills for, for other people so it, it just makes it harder and harder as um, you know especially I've, I've seen what happens to people when they hit 30 it's, it's not a not a pretty sight <laughs> some months later a new lineup rehearses in a parking building in Auckland. There's new songs to work out for the next album. There's new members who have to learn all the old songs for touring. 
Bass player Terry Moore has rejoined the band for the third time and new keyboardist Gillian Dempsey learns a new song about the Ara Moana massacre. The work goes on, as Phillips has said, for as long as it takes. Now his attention has turned to the United States with its lucrative 50% of the world music market. He won't be satisfied until they've cracked it there in the big league. The new material for the, the next album, which is work entitled Soft Bomb, again, some of the material has been sitting around in raw form for years now. It's just things I've been waiting for a chance to work on. So, but the, the approach we take to it will, will shape into hopefully a sort of a step on from what we've done previously. Although this album essentially would be a lot more um, straightforward, I think. I, I've satisf satisfied something with myself in terms of complicated songs with uh, things like submarine bells, at least for a while. Since this was shot, Jimmy and Gillian have also left the band, and Phillips and Moore are recording in the US with REM's keyboardist. So what of the Chills' future now? Well, you'd have to be positive about their future because, quite simply because Martin is there and he's determined and, and he's got the ability, so it's really only bad luck that's going to pull them back. Um, but by the same token, they're going to need good luck because luck and timing are very crucial. Phillips has found the last few months particularly difficult. He's even thought about throwing it all away. But as he says, the name of the Chills has been going for 10 years and too many people have already put in too much hard work to just walk away from it. Each of the 11 lineups so far has been a quite different angle on the theme of the Chills and uh, that's been a constant source of fresh ideas and um, you know I don't know if we would have lasted 10 years if it had been the same band right from the start so it's you know it's, it's been pros and cons to the whole thing. <laughs>